In this new video, we are going to be doing something pretty cool. I am going to hand carve a form for a kangaroo. So if you've taken a look around the taxidermy catalogs, you might notice that there is very little in the way of forms for a kangaroo. There are a few available, but they only come in one size. And in the case of this kangaroo, I decided it would just be easier to hand carve one. That way it's a perfect fit. So a lot of people are really curious about this process. Um, it's a lot of fun. It makes a mess. But in the end, you're rewarded with something that fits the animal perfectly. And um, dollar for dollar, it is cheaper to uh, carve your own form than buy one. Of course, you've got a lot of hours invested, so you got to weigh that against um, you know, your profits. I certainly wouldn't carve a form for everything just because it's cheaper in materials. But for something like a kangaroo, a baby giraffe that I've done in the past, um, any exotic animals that there's either um, little to no forms available for, this is a great option. So some of these scenes are going to be uh, muted in color just because we're working with a carcass and we want to keep this cleaner for social media. Um, but uh, hang on and I'm going to show you how we start this process. So the foam I'm going to be carving out of is called a dowel flotation billet. Um, these come in six to eight foot tall pieces. They're sort of a lightweight blue foam. I've been able to obtain these locally from um, dock supply companies. They're used underneath docks to provide flotation. Uh, but if you, can, if you can get this, it's uh, quite a bit cheaper and easier to work with than taxidermy foam. Uh, I've got a pretty good sized chunk here. I just cut it into appropriate size pieces. And next I'm going to prepare my carcass. So this may look a little nasty, but it's been in the freezer for a while. We've got the body, the tail, front leg, and back leg of the kangaroo. We only need one front leg, one back leg for this process, but I just need to trace the shape of all these pieces onto the foam. There are several ways you can do this. So if you want to save the shape of your carcass as a tracing for another time. Um, say you get another kangaroo in, you no longer have the carcass, but you um, want to carve another form. I would suggest taking these carcass pieces, putting them onto a piece of tracing paper or sheet plastic, tracing it out so that you can keep those pieces for future reference. Today, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to trace these right here onto the foam so I don't have to cut out a template and transpose it on the foam. That's just adding another step. But especially when I have an animal that's kind of unique that I may not get another carcass of that animal, but I might need to mount a hide in the future, uh, I'll make a, a tracing of it for my carcass catalog. But for now, let's just take a Sharpie and we'll trace around this. Now, this is going to be a hopping kangaroo, so I have given some thought as to um, the shape the leg is going to have in the final position. We can make adjustments later, but overall, I want to go ahead and have it in the shape that I want. So I'm going to push this toe up a little bit. Take that off. And now we have a perfect tracing of his back leg. And here is the tracing for the body of the kangaroo, the front leg and the neck. You can see I pack that all in pretty tight and conservatively so that we don't waste this foam. Now I'm going to take over to my bandsaw and cut this shape out. Um, and we're going to do the body and the front legs as well. I'll meet you over at my bandsaw and show you how I cut these. So we're in the basement and I'm going to cut my pieces out on the bandsaw. This is a Grizzly brand bandsaw. It has a 12 inch riser on it, which allows you to be able to fit these large blocks of foam under here, which is a bit different than what you'll find at Lowe's or Home Depot. Most of those bandsaws uh, only have a six inch opening. So look into the Grizzly brands of bandsaw. They're more commercial grade bandsaw uh, with these riser kits. So I'm gonna take my foam and I'm going to uh, run it through. I would suggest um, eye protection and I'm also wearing hearing protection. You can't hardly see it, but uh, they're called loop earplugs and they're very low profile and work great. Thank <laughs> you. 
so now we have our cutout. This is for the front leg, but look how wide it is. We do not need it that wide. This is going to make two legs. This could actually about make three legs, but I'm going to cut it in half, um, and that'll give us our uh, two front legs. identical back in the shop here are all our pieces cut out and you can see kind of how this is all going to go together you know, back leg little front leg will be there neck and the tail it's all crude right now but you can really see the shape now this is when the kind of hard part comes in. We have got to carve these to size and we're gonna be using the carcass as just a general guideline as far as muscles and width of these pieces. Now it's time to start carving. I always seem to do this part on the floor. Why, I don't know, I guess I like pain, but I feel more um, able to move around and, and work with the foam when I'm sitting on the floor. We're going to start with uh, what I feel is the most simplest piece, this uh, front arm. And we've got our tools here. Uh, basic, just sharp knives. These are Victoria Knox knives. They work great. And I've got um, some stout ruffers, both a full-size ruffer and the slim ruffer. So we're just going to be taking this block and carving it down to a uh, much smaller size here. I like to do most of this just visually. I just lay it beside me and look at it as I'm working. But the first thing I'm gonna do is knock off all the edges. Go around the edge here and just round everything out. I like to have a lot of extra material to work with so I don't cut it down too narrow for starters. And then this is where it just really starts to get messy. I'm just going to rough this until I start to get the shape I want. We're getting a lot closer, but still uh, much too wide right here. I've been working on carving the body here, giving a rounded shape. I've cut out some areas for the legs to set into. I set up this head. It's real basic. I did a cast of the skull, and that's how I got that. So I'll be needing to sculpt the details of that in, uh, into the head a little more detailed. But we've got kind of our rough shape here. So I just continue to go around the edges, round everything out. Later on, I'll put some ribs in here. I uh, kind of just want to get everything tacked into place for now. I got all my legs carved, my little front legs, both my back legs. Um, now let's assemble some things. Kind of did a rough test fit earlier. 
and I can move these around. I want it to look like it's hopping. I'm just going to throw a couple screws in for now. Two screws in each leg. Obviously, I'm going to have to sand and foam some things down in. I'm sure I'll move these around, but let's just get it in place for now. Two four-inch screws. We'll hold this good. Let's see. Let's see, I want to position these front legs kind of like so. I'll look at my reference photos and follow that as to how to finally place it. Here's that tail, carved up a tail for it. Oh yeah, I am really liking the way that this is looking. It just really gives the essence of a hopping kangaroo. And right now it's extremely fragile. This could break so easily. In fact, I broke this back leg while I was carving it. Um, so this is going to complete part one of this video. Next, we're gonna be taking heavy threaded rods and putting them in these back legs, which is gonna make this uh, completely sturdy. We'll put some smaller rods in the front legs as well as the tail. So that's gonna solidify this whole thing up, give us a means to attach it to the base. Once I put the rods in, I don't have to worry about it breaking as much, and I'll go to foaming all this in and really detailing out the terrain of this since we have some open gaps, some areas that are too high, maybe too low. I will be correcting that with two-part foam. But I hope you've enjoyed this so far. I have about three hours into it at this point. Um, we started about one o'clock with the tracing and the cutting of the pieces, and now it's four o'clock, so I don't think that's bad for three hours in. Um, not including the casting of the head, which was a two-part plaster mold of the skull, but that didn't take that long. So um, stay tuned for the rest of this process as we do a custom kangaroo.